and New Order after a four-year sabbatical have released a superb new album, Republic, and the first single off that is opening tonight's show. to have New Order with me tonight on Postmodern and thank you for joining joining us. Okay. That was an amazing performance we've just seen. The Baywatch set doing Regret. I mean, did the, the, the bodies, the Californian kind of setting, did it kind of put you off doing what you had to do? <laughs> no, I quite used to it really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was actually, you know, we actually did it on Southport Beach. It's just camera trickery that makes you look like, oh, that was actually put in afterwards. We weren't, we weren't there at all. And it was a models agency with supplying the beefcakes, was it? Yeah, and they did the sandwiches as well. <laughs> <laughs> was it kind of weird to, to do the stuff that you did in performing in LA? Because I know at the time you were there, it was a sort of a heavy political scene in Los Angeles as well. The Rodney King things were were happening. I don't think you really see much of it though in Hollywood. It's like uh, you tend to be, it's a bit of a Disneyland for adults and that sort of never crept into it but there was sort of a it was a bit tense they brought all the riot police and stuff we i think we left just before the verdict came out so good planning <laughs> it's um i mean uh, did you expect regret to be as huge right i mean it's huge right now but as big as as it is it's sort of like this lovely pop song that you've created did you expect it to to be as you know get the popularity don't really expect anything when you write you just write a song that you like yeah. Didn't expect anything. Well, I did actually expect it to be absolutely <laughs> huge. I'd be really it's disappointed if it wasn't. It's a bonus, isn't it? It's a bonus, isn't it? That's why I look at it. It's a bonus if it's in it. Is it, is it like a song that's sort of reflective of your lives as a musician? <clears throat> I mean, there's a song in there, you know, I want a house of my own, just to I speak on the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just about seeing the entire life, really, you know, for years and years. Um, we've been in a group having a wild time, I suppose you could say. And um, it's about enjoying the other side of life, um, the quiet side of life, although we didn't do that last night, did we? Unfortunately, <coughs> yeah, apparently not. <laughs> a lot of bands, though, say that they, you know, join a band or become musicians or whatever, whatever to avoid the quiet life that you describe in that. Yeah, I mean, that's true, and that's why we joined a band. Um, but um, I've grown to realise that there's uh, other aspects of life that, um, that maybe you can enjoy just as much and maybe don't take such a horrendous toll on your health. If you've not got your health, what have you got? You've got nothing. You've got yeah. nothing. Are you happy? Anyway. I'm happy. <laughs> it's, it's been about four years, I think, since Technique. And it's such a lot of gone under. The, a lot of water's gone under the bridge in that time. You know, you've had solo projects on the go. Factory disappeared. I mean, was there any a point in that four years where you thought that you know New Order might not record together again? Mm, about last night, about <laughs> five o'clock, I think. <coughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I just uh, we just got on with it basically. I mean, the thing was about having the break was that we ended up being busier than we've ever been anyway. So, because we spent so much time together with all the business stuff, you didn't really feel as if it was a break. You felt together anyway. So it seemed quite natural almost to start recording again. Because you can see so much of each other anyway. I think we always knew that we would get back together again. It, um, it kind of pressure came from the press. It was kind of the press that's saying that we wouldn't get back together and that we'd actually split up. Um, but it was completely unfounded, really. You know, it wasn't true. We're glad you're back together and glad you've got a number Sorry. one on your hands, which is really great. We're going to play um, Rage Against the Machine now on Postmodern. Do you, do you know these guys? I've heard him. Um, I think he's an angry young man. He's yeah. angry? Very angry, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a place for right? anger in this world, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> I think his head's going to fall off. Mm. He's that angry. Well, he better bite the bullet. Ooh. That was the first single released off Carl Wallinger's, or Carl Wallinger's World Parties album, Bang, of course, recorded at their own studio, Seaview. Now, when you guys were working on Republic, you started off in your studios and then relocated to <coughs> Peter Gabriel's studios, Real World. Did, was that the, the way it worked? Yeah. 
did it make a difference working at, at Peter Gabriel's place? I mean, everybody talks about it as being this amazing <laughs> it was a, it was a lot easier for Steve and Julie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we didn't have to do as much washing up and stuff. And uh, like, it's a brilliant <clears throat> studio. It should really open it as a club, really. It's it's good, right. we, we tried to open it as a club. We did try open it as a club once, for one but, night, uh, yeah. when Peter went away. It's made a right mess away, of it. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of work done there. Yeah, very Good nice. Again, yeah. As well. Back again, yeah. Also, uh, we just saw the World Party thing. That World Party had um, Steve Lillywhite work on their album, which is you know unusual for them. And you guys had Stephen Haig come into we produce. We almost had Steve Lillywhite once, didn't we? <laughs> once upon a time, yeah. yeah. He told us to get lost because we use keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange, very strange. Does it make a difference having someone from the outside work on your own material? Is it, is it easier or do you lose something in the final mix, do you think? Uh, I think there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to it. Um, I mean, it's, it was nice to have somebody else take the blame and sort of sort you out and look after things for you, somebody who is sober, sober-minded. Uh, but you sort of do miss out on some aspects of it, but I think he's done a great job, so I'm quite happy. You weren't worried at all that it might sound pet shop boyish? He's, he's <coughs> no. no. <laughs> The thing is, is, uh, is Stephen Haig, our producer, is also working on the next Pet Shop Boys album. I think he's just mixing it at the moment. So it might sound like New Order. It might sound like New <laughs> Oh, they've got a song called The Young Offender, haven't they? Have they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so have we. Mm. <laughs> take note. We're going to take a look at uh, a single from Belly, who I believe you've had some contact with in the past, Peter? Yeah, I was very rude to her once, so this is my way of saying uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Belly. It's great to have New Order on tonight's Postmodern. Now, you guys are one of the bands who've been really successful in combining um, synthesized dance rock. A band who just released an album, Depeche Mode, who have had um, sort of a mixed reaction, I think, to their latest album. Um, maybe have not been quite so successful, I'm not sure. They were known as the archetypal synth band, and now they've kind of rocked out. Do you, do you think it works? Um, I think everybody's got a bit of uh, you know, a rock album in the I mean, Depeche Mode obviously uh, had, and you know, I think the beard has definitely been an improvement. Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> oh, it's a bit, a bit of an influence you've had on them, really. Thank you. Do you like the new album? Do you, have you uh, I've not heard the album. I like, I like that single, Walking In My Shoes. I wasn't that keen on the first single. Right. I didn't understand the video very much. This Walking In My Shoes video. I don't know if anyone's got any uh, ideas what it's about. It's been sent to me on a postcard. You got it. We'll see it. This is walking in my shoes. That was front 242 and we're going to crack straight into Nirvana, who I guess seem to represent that Seattle sound business, which has a lot of similarities to what happened in Manchester not so long ago, a few years ago. Do you, do you think that they run the risks of, you know, everybody rushing to Seattle to try and get the next best thing is what happened to Manchester? Well, they've, they've got a bit of an advantage there because there's actually two Seattles in America and a lot of people go to the wrong place in Manchester. There's, there's just one place. So it's, it's been really in America weird. though, was not Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be now, haven't you? <laughs> so you are in actual fact wrong. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm wrong. Yeah. Does it matter? Do you, do you think they'll be able to kind of sustain the, the impact that they had when they first came out, you know, Nirvana? Yeah, difficult second album, but third album, whatever. Um, it'd be nice to see what happens. I, I, I just want to know what the guy's doing with the broom in the video. <laughs> We've got a few questions about these videos, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Yeah. I hope, hope they don't play out. Just shows we watch them. <laughs> <laughs> don't play ours, huh? What did you think of Smells Like Teen Spirit when it first came out? Um, to be quite honest, I couldn't understand the words. And I quite like records where you can't understand the words, really. Um, when I saw what the words were, I sort of went off it a bit. And it's great to be joined by New Order tonight, co-hosting Postmodern. And we're going to go straight to the queen of the moment, the lady that people are saying is the, uh, the saviour of British rock, uh, PJ Harvey, in her single 50-foot Queenie. I'm not sure. How does, how does she rate in your list of records to buy or have you have you heard the album it's rid of me i think it's the album no i've just heard no. the singles heard the single. do, you, do you like what she's doing uh never heard it <laughs> is it acid house no it's no. not acid house no it's rather rather heavy kind of um new heavy heavy female Rock, I, I guess. She's a bit angry as well. She's angry, yeah. but I mean, did she sack the band or what? Because where are they? they she, she used to say 
I'm a band. But she's not anymore, is she? She's just Polly. She's wise, don't Yeah. <laughs> We've got a dog called Polly, actually. But just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> Hello, Polly. <laughs> So what's she doing while you're away from home? You're uh, calling. Yeah, she's doing a solo album. <laughs> the other one. Yeah. <laughs> but she likes PJ Proby as well, doesn't she? Yeah, it's yeah. strange, strange how uncanny coincidence. She tried to find me on TV. Maybe she'd get off on this one. 50 for Queenie, do you think? She probably would, yeah. And that was Jesus Jones. We we're going to take a look at Morrissey, a fellow Mancunian. Actually, I don't, I don't know what he's up to these days. Do you, do you guys know what he's up to? Yes. It's completely bonkers. Isn't it? It's just on a live album called, um, strangely enough, Beethoven was deaf because he was. Yeah. <laughs> it's a personal favourite of yours, I think, isn't it, Jimmy? This one. Beethoven was deaf. What, what do you think of Morrison? We've got Ouija board, Ouija board coming up. Yeah. Your choice, I believe. Yes. <laughs> I just like his songs. He's got good tunes. And I like the videos. It's got it's Kathy in it. Who's Kathy sort of Bird, bending over. So it's good to have, at least have her up there. Yeah, I'll put her out to you. Oh, okay. Girl guy, doesn't it? Yeah, she's a girl guy. What was going on in that video? <laughs> what was that cat doing on the head? <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he was having a great that time to me. Yeah. That was our, um, our sort of... Uh, it was a tribute, wasn't it? Poking fun at, yeah, that didn't work. It was a few, quite a few Americans thought we were actually happy metal. But we are, I suppose. Probably found its final tap. In our behaviour. Um, this is very strange because I, when we were doing uh, technique, strange enough, we went in this bar and a, a poison video came on. And I swear, shot for shot, it was exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. Who was, direct, who was the director for that video? That was Catherine Bigelow, who did um, Blue Steel. And And did she know, she knew what you were on about? There, she was no, I don't think she really got a, <laughs> sort of clue, no. I think she kind of, there's a, a good chance that she likes heavy metal, yeah. secretly, so um, maybe she wasn't the right choice. She was mm. taking it very seriously, was she? She, was, she did take it very seriously. Yeah. That was a sort of stark contrast to the bit in the middle. But we took it seriously. She was quite heavy compared to the <laughs> spoof aspect of our bit. I didn't really ratify that myself. Sitting perfectly on tonight's postmodern. We're going to take a look at Suede, um, <laughs> who've been doing extremely well um, in the British press. We're, we're playing Animal Nitrate. Are you a fan of Suede? Do you that think they're. Yeah. I believe the first one. Oh, that's the first one. Oh, Sorry, which, which one's this? It's kind yeah. of the, uh, the, the kiss of death, <laughs> musically, if you do well in the British press anyway. Yeah, is that right now? They, um, they, they've had a huge amount of press, though. I don't know whether you think they, they're deserving of this. Because their music's so living up to... Whatever they get, really. <laughs> do you like the music? Do you like what they're doing? Um, I like mid-70s Bowie. <laughs> I, and, um, it's nice to hear it. It's nice to, it's nice to see a group, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see oh. a group with a singer um, whose name's <laughs> Brett, I suppose. Um, one of them's called Bernard as well. Is it's it? not. Oh, it's it's, it's, it's nice another one of those Bernard. coincidences, isn't it? Thought it was only me and Bernard Edwards. Now there's another one. Because you, you get together and call yourself the three Bernards. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really, really good idea. That's <laughs> we know someone called Brat and they could be the two brats. <laughs> I, think, I think we've explored this one enough now, haven't we? Mm, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's see the video. Let's see the video. Hey. Well, that's it. I'm really glad you could join us for this two hours. It's been brilliant to have you. <laughs> I bet you said to all the boys, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> We're finishing off with um, Kraftwerk, which I believe is a band close to your heart, Bernard. Yeah, I think I can manage to talk about Kraftwerk for five I minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> um, I don't know, they were just a big influence on me as uh, an electronic musician. And. Um, I like their scientific approach to music, which I find quite unique. And um, Steve likes them as well, don't you, Steve? Uh, yeah, and I, I like them as well. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, they're for a bunch of wacky Germans. They, uh, they it's do quite good nice the way they're quite anonymous and they don't push themselves personally. You know, it's quite nice. But you're not a fan, Yes, I am. You are. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put you on the picture of